here is a record in Pardot. And if you look in the content section, you can see that the source campaign is part of tracking and the conversion point is born website contact form. So what that's saying is the source campaign was part of tracking is the, is the tracking that's on our website. So it's a natural search is the source and the conversion point is when they filled in that form on the website. Now it's worth saying that Pardot campaigns are used for all sorts of areas inside Pardot. So when you create a custom redirect, or if you create a landing page, or if you create an email, you're always associating every element of your, your, your assets in Pardot to campaigns. So Pardot campaigns track the first touch that a prospect has with your online marketing activities. Now with various marketing elements being associated with the campaign, you'll often find that the campaigns in Pardot aren't necessarily the same as your marketing campaigns. So let me give you an example for that. When EBS assign a client, we have a run of five emails that go out to that client to onboard them. Now, when we create those five emails in Pardot, we are forced and you have to attach those five emails to a campaign. So the campaign we have in Pardot for those emails is onboarding emails. Now that is not the same as the marketing campaign that we are running, that we are putting effort into on a, on a, on a monthly basis. Um, so there is differentiation and you are doubling up two, two types of activities within that one, one campaign feature in Pardot. It's worth also saying that Pardot also creates campaigns from the UTM tracking on links. So if someone clicks on a link that has UTM tracking and that has a UTM campaign, if the person doesn't already exist in Pardot, Pardot will pick up the campaign, it will create the campaign in Pardot and it will associate that person to the campaign. And last but not least, Pardot campaigns do not support multi-touch. It is just the first touch from your online marketing activities. So moving swiftly on, the big difference with Salesforce campaigns, as you can see from this window, is I'm here in, in our Salesforce org and I've got lots of campaigns associated to me. So Salesforce campaigns are multi-touch. You know, you can have a lot of different campaigns attached to the same person. Um, this is a typical campaign setup in Salesforce. As you can see, we've got more options. We've got start dates, end dates, expected revenue, budgeted cost. One feature that I particularly like is you'll see the advanced setup button um, just next to manage members. If you click that, you come to this screen and this screen allows you to set different campaign member statuses. Now the, the out the box member status from Salesforce is sent and responded but for webinars, we'll have attended. For um, live events, we might have interested. So the person has had a demo and they're interested in knowing more. So we, we, we tailor the member status depending on the type of campaign that we're doing. Now, this is a opportunity in Salesforce. As you see from the bottom, there is a contact role associated to this opportunity. And this is where campaigns really come into play. If we can get a salesperson to attach a contact role to an opportunity, and just in this case, if we were to click new next to contact roles, the, the salesperson would see this screen, and they simply need to select with the, the radio button and, and choose the role and save to add a contact role to the opportunity. Now, if that happens, then the primary campaign source in the opportunity will be populated with the latest campaign that that person, Daniel Remedios, was associated to, which is immediately populates your, your, your campaign that's being attached to opportunities. And also, and I'm going to show you this later, we can start using marketing attribution or marketing influence to look at how our marketing activities affect the opportunities and the income and revenue. Now there's a couple of big points to make here. In the first example, if Steve is added to an opportunity and is later associated to a campaign after the opportunity is closed, the campaign will not be associated with the opportunity. So what we're really saying here is, is associating with a contact role is not retrospective. 
it doesn't go back in time. So essentially, the, the contact role has to be added to the opportunity before the opportunity is closed. And that is very, very important. The second point is if Steve is associated to a campaign and then added as a contact role to the opportunity, the most recent campaign will be logged as the primary campaign against the opportunity. Now this also has its flaws and it's important to understand. Say for instance that we met uh, Steve at a big event that we spent lots of money for and then let's say that we send everyone in our database a newsletter and all of those newsletter people get added to a campaign. The newsletter would overwrite the important campaign because it's more recent. So that's an important thing. I'm going to come on to that a bit later on. So the Salesforce campaign summary. Prospects and contacts can be associated with multiple Salesforce campaigns. It is not like Pardot. There's not a single source campaign. They can be attached to any number of Salesforce campaigns over time. You can also define campaign member status to suit your campaigns, your, your measures, the way you measure different things. And if contact roles are associated to opportunities before they close, Marketing RI can be tracked. 